Hey, welcome back to the boat shop. I was just kind of instinctively doing some work on the boat and it dawned on me that maybe you need to know these things. If you're racing the boat and you have a class or a club that is a stickler about the rules, as they should be, uh, there are dimensions that the boat is allowed to run. You'll recall, if you've been watching all the videos, if you hadn't, just stop now, go back to the start, watch all the videos. Um, the, the kit comes too big. It's too long. We're allowed, is it 43 inches? I think 43. Okay, can you see that? We are at 43. It comes a little over 43 and a half. This one, this Sponson Chine here, I have cut and reshaped. And this piece has been cut and reshaped. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. Uh, to get the boat the proper length. So, what do you think that means for the width? Right, too wide. And we should have talked about that before. And hold on. Thought you said you wanted out. Welcome back. He's my boy. Do you mind? Let me just... Uh... Here, big one. Look at that. All right. Now, with any luck, he be quiet for... <laughs> Two minutes. Where were we? The boat's too wide. And I, yeah, anyway, where was I? I should have talked to you about that. Didn't, I didn't really worry about that because I knew I was going to set the width of the boat once I was ready to assemble. Just because things happen and things do what they do. So what you're gonna do, I've already reconfigured this one. It's, it's simple, as you can imagine. All you need to do is deepen these slots here, right? so that this comes into a certain width and we get our proper width and away we go. Uh, there's a little bit more to it than that. When you deepen this, of course, now this profile actually extends too far out. So you're gonna need to sand, recontour this a little bit. You'll do the same thing on this surface down in here. I just popped that whole thing apart, didn't I? Hold on, don't go away. This will not take long. I think such a puzzle but you got to do this okay get it fit make sure everything fits okay deepen that reprofile make all this fit nice these you need to do the same thing if you wind up having to deepen them you won't have to go much more you, you this is the one you're going to take the, the furthest and you'll need to go quite a bit on this one a little bit less here a little bit less here you know what I mean um, as this comes together. Uh, so reprofile these. You can see this one's been sanded because I reprofiled it. This bottom portion here, you'll recall that we are changing its configuration to be more correct to scale. This we will configure once we flip this thing over, which we're going to do very, very soon. And we'll do a ton of sponson design work. So that is true all the way forward on these. So it's not a big deal up under here. But get your deck profile set nice where... Uh, um, you see, where's, uh, uh, falling apart here. You know, take your time. Work on it until you get it to where it's something that'll lay together really pretty. Um, you want to stop to where your deck piece, this is our deck, isn't that nice? We'll come down and hit this material without running over the end. Okay, can you see that? And when, we're all, when all is said and done, there'll be a whole bunch of epoxy there. And then we'll sand that and make a nice little profile here. And this will actually become ever so slightly narrower than it is right now as we sand it and get it all configured into shape. And so you're going to do that all the way along here. Okay. So you're going to deepen these slots to get the width where you want it. Where do you want the width and how do you measure it? Here's where you're going to have a fight with your inspector. How do I know that? Because I did the last time I built this boat, and I've run into this before. What is width? Is this the width? No. <laughs> We're not measuring the circumference of the boat. The rule does not say what is the circumference of the profile. The rule says what is the width. This is the width. 
how do you check that? It's kind of hard to do without a, without a square standing here, right? And a square standing over there. You know, so really the inspector should do it that way because it's how would the boat fit in a box? What width box would be required for the boat to fit in it? And uh, so as we're assembling this boat, it's really easy as you've already probably conceived. We just need to know this distance and it is five and a quarter. This is where I want you to set it. Okay, five and a quarter. It was, oh, it was five and three eighths or some doggone thing. What's this distance here? I know. Do you know? <laughs> you do if you've been paying attention. Ten. Five and a quarter. Five and a quarter is ten and a half plus ten is 20 and one half inch or 20.5 what does the rule say the master hull roster you can look it up i can shoot you a link to it if you need it 20.62 so at 20.5 five and a quarter five and a quarter and ten we're going to be just a little bit under and then again as i say once we're sanding and, and profiling it'll come in a little bit further yet. I have not cut this one yet. Well, I'm going to lay them together so you can kind of see how those look. So hang in there. Uh, and I have, did I do that one? I think I did that one. And it's once I got to this one, I thought, gosh, these guys are going to need to know this. So let's look at this real quick. I, I have cut this one in a little bit and reprofiled it so that I have that five and a quarter here. Uh, this one is number five. It's going to go here. Have not cut it at this point. Oh, by the way, before you glue this thing up, see that line? The black. That's because of that, uh, the laser cutting it. Make sure you sand these. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Then you won't see that blatant black line, because this doesn't get painted in here, okay, on the inboard here. So, you gotta look cool. All right, number five. I can hear Piggy out there barking her brains out. Was that five? Five. Going on here. Tuck that in over there. And my next magic trick, all this is going to go together all at the same time. There we go. All right, here's an example of what you'll see. This has been cut. And I have all of this tension now because this one needs to get deepened. Okay, now I don't mind if, if, it, if it stops with just a tiny bit of tension. This feels like too much to me. So you're going to take this guy off. You can come in. <laughs> You're on video, so don't don't linger. Hey, Piggy. Hey, baby. All right, I just put a couple of marks on there for myself so I know where I'm going here. Something like that. Back on here, back in there. I know, this takes time. It's custom stuff, man, custom stuff. Okay, can you see that? Just a tiny bit of tension now, which I actually like, because when we glue this together, that'll hold this guy in place, right? That makes sense? Okay, do that all the way across. Now, we're gonna lay this on here, and I wanna see where the deck would land if I just ran it on here without modifying anything. It actually lands pretty good yet. The bottom runs over. Remember, we're gonna reprofile all of this, so I don't much care. I'm just gonna make some of it go away. Don't panic. We'll take care of it later. Okay, it's completely out of my way now, which is good. All right, so do that for all of these. Clean up that inside part there. Look at that, look at that. Oh, ugly black line. No good, not cool. There you go, now it looks like we cared. Make sure that you back this up. Drop some wax paper down in there so you don't glue to this. Uh, you can see I actually cut this away a little bit here so that I wouldn't be gluing here. Oh, I showed, I was going to show you how to put those together. By the way, you can put these on now, of course. Of course. You may be able to tell. 
I lifted this off of the jig and I put a strip of uh, radio box tape there. You could just kind of maybe even lift it up and tuck some wax paper under there. But I laid a strip of radio box tape on there so that we're not gluing this to the jig. Not good. Uh, here, let's take a look at this so that you can see how much material got moved here. And once you get one of them profiled up the way you like it, then you just match the other one to it, okay? Because these sponsons are the same side to side. And this kind of all on you, you know, profile it the way you like, but you do got to get it legal. Well, you don't have to. I mean, if you're just fun running the boat, just put it together. Okay, can you see that? About that much. These are pretty. Not to it. There you go. A little saw work, a little sanding work. Okay, so now you've done that. You've profiled this. You've trimmed all of those. Everything kind of sort of fits. Oh my goodness, this is good here. All right, glue these guys on. If you haven't yet, now's a perfectly fine time to finish these back pieces here. I don't know where the pieces went for mine. Uh, anyway, put this rear plate on. Oh, by the way, put a hole in it first. I typically... Uh, Put a hole back here for to drain it, right? Right, for draining. Because you're gonna come off of the water and the boat's gonna be half full of water. It's just the way it is. And uh, and I put radio box tape over it while I run it. And then if I get a bunch of water in the boat, I'll just tip it up. And on this boat, this back is going to be open. Uh, it's gonna have an access here, pretty much all the way to the back. And when I come in off the water, I can tip the boat and get all the water out except for just a little bit in here. So I don't even know if the holes are that big a deal other than to get the last of it out. And what I am going to do, you do what you want to do. I'm going to drill the hole up high. And I'm not even going to put tape over it. I'm just going to run it. And then when I bring it in, I'll tip it and it'll run out. Okay? The boat's moving, right? And if it stops, yes, it'll fill up. But we'll have flotation in it. It won't sink. It might look a little bit scary but it won't sink. Okay, so you're gonna put these on. You can now, if you would like to, I'm probably going to, get your eighth by three sixteenths. Is that what that is? That doesn't look right. Yeah, maybe it is. And you're gonna lay that in here. Glue this on. All the way up to the front. Okay, follow that profile really, really well. Later, we'll just talk about this right now, when we put the decks on, here's my deck again. <laughs> the deck is going to leave a fair bit of this exposed because that's where our cowling will sit. If you get one of my cowlings, it'll sit right in this area here. And I'll get you that measurement, okay? But when we're getting ready to lay these decks on, I will get that number for you where you'll want to place this so that the cowling will sit on there real pretty light. So that's what the 3 16th width is for here. Don't put anything in here. There's no need. I would over here, just where the deck is going to land here, add you a small piece of whatever right here, just to give you a little bit more glue surface up here on the top. Okay, so you can put those in now. Put these on. Go ahead and assemble this. There's nothing fancy for me to show you there, right? You're gonna use this, it's gonna have a little bit of tension, or even if it doesn't, uh, put uh, rubber bands on it. You see, I'm, I, I'm crazy about my rubber bands. Uh, they're, they're a great tool to get this all held together. Uh, I should mention, I'm not gonna reassemble it now. One thing I do want you to do along the way, just to make sure that your pieces are correct and good and wonderful and that nothing is too badly out of alignment. This boat being equal side to side, you should be able to measure everywhere one of these pieces are, and it should be the same side to side. You know what I mean? So maybe you assemble it and, and it's got a low point or a high point or something weird like that. Okay, find out why. Sand, cut, file, bake new parts, whatever you gotta do till this thing has a nice smooth profile that is equal side to side. Okay, so let's wrap this one up with a little bit of information in the uh, there's a reason for everything department. This side's already been assembled, as you can see, as far as the stringers and so on. Going to have you add one here. 
And let me see if I can show you. Notice this is eighth by three sixteenths, but stand it up on end like this because it's stronger this way than it would be the other way, okay? And the reason for these are, this isn't structural, you know? I, I mean, a little bit, I suppose. But really, it's to keep this deck from collapsing and then it'll crack along here. So the, uh, the kit comes with the markings for this one, with the cutouts for this one. And they're, they're huge. I mean, they're quarter inch cutouts. We're not doing that. Eighth by three sixteenths. Stand it on end and just stick it in here. Don't worry about the gap. You, you know what I mean? This is just, and it's epoxied here and here. Not, not a whole lot, but enough that it will support the deck. So stand it on end. You're going to add this one here. And the way you do that is with this cool little wheel here. If you haven't got one of these, um, click more in the description right below this video and it'll expand out. And I have a link where you can pick up this, uh, the coolest ever uh, little wood wheel that'll just and be careful because you'll touch it on here and it just zing and it cuts right in. So cut yourself some slots here. Try to make a nice one here so that it looks good when all is said and done. Again, in the, in here, the rest of it, this is about the only place in the boat we're at. I kind of don't care. Uh, you're just slapping it in there. Um, you know, kind of taper cut it up, up at the front. Have them land there. This one you'll see I've laid it down where the 3 16 is up top, just because I, I want a whole lot of glue surface up here just to keep the deck from popping free. You could even turn it the other way and it'd be fine. Uh, so you're going to do that. All right, add one here. Here it's absolutely critical because, uh, of course, the turn fin's right here and the weight balance of the boat is going to be in line with that turn fin in the center or, or near the front of the turn fin. And so anytime you pick up the boat, you will carry it right here. And you will squeeze this and you will flex this deck and it will crack. And then I'm just continuing it on down here to help keep this deck from bowing in here. You'll see when we go to put the skin on, it tends to, to do uh, bow a little bit right here. It's, it's fine. But this ensures, again, that it doesn't get broken on the way. Oh, is there anything else you need to know? We've just finally put the, the pieces in the rear. This is holding this one on here. The last one I got to do before we flip the boat over... Uh, is just glue this one here on, and uh, I'm in the middle of, uh, how old are you? Anyway, I'm doing preparation for a procedure, so I can't work right now. In fact, i got to shoot this video quick, and then i got to go. I mean, literally, i got to go. Uh, but anyway, you can see this one's being attached right now. Um, uh, you know me, I'm the rubber band guy. I uh, string things with rubber bands, um, you know. Clips, do whatever you got to do, uh, but critically, you're making sure that the sponson is held in place and that the height is correct. This thing will still move a lot. You'll see when we pull this thing off the jig next, it'll still flex a whole bunch. It doesn't really stiffen up until them upper decks go on, so uh, it is your job to hold it in place perfectly and flawlessly. Ringo, say hi to everybody. Yeah, he's a good little boy. Boy, he and Jackson get into some fisticuffs, man. I'll tell you what. There's a new kid in town, and Jackson don't like it. All right, that's it. I think this one's done. Yeah!